Good morning, everybody. How you doing today? My name's Andrew. I'm Daniel. I'm Mimi. I'm Grandpa. I'm Matt. I'm Ralph. And we're some of the Veggie Boys. And girls. And we'd like to thank you for stopping by. Hey everyone, welcome back. It's so nice to see you. So far this morning, we've been off to a great start. We've got the animals fed, we've got the farm market all set up. Everything's looking good. Temperatures dropped down into the low 20s last night, so everything up here is frozen. That's not what it's gonna be like for this upcoming week because we have a day where it's gonna be in the 60s and we're gonna have rain all day. It just amazes me how our December can be warmer than the November that we had. Right now, my dad is with a seed customer because we're coming up on the last days where you can get discounts for buying seed. And my dad likes to make sure to get all of his customers taken care of before those discounts are gone. So that has been taking a lot of dad's time lately. What's going on? Are we working in here or are we playing? Am I gonna be on TV? Dad's customer is here now. They're in the farm market talking about different types of varieties that they wanna plant. Now he plants about 500 acres. So between corn and beans, he does get quite a bit. So dad and him are going over everything that they need. It can be a little confusing sometimes going over the different varieties, but we have a lot of information that you can just share with them. And it makes this buying process a lot easier for the customers. Alrighty, Grammy, what are we having for lunch today? A ham barbecue and corned beef and cabbage. We just got finished with lunch and Matthew and I have a little job we have to take care of. The place where we get our sawdust gave us a call and asked us to come and pick some up because their storage tanks are full, so we need to get some out of there. And we're happy to do this because we always need sawdust. So if we're proactive about it, they always give us a call, then we head out and get as much sawdust as we can. Do you want me to move this out of the way? I think I can fit. We gotta put the tailgate on. So we need boards for the back of the truck so as to prevent the sawdust from falling out the back. And we weren't able to find them anywhere. Mom always said we never looked underneath anything. Why would someone park the four-wheeler on top of the boards? We do look under stuff sometimes, just not like all the time. Sorry, your camera's right in my mirror. And what we really like to do when it comes to this place, the second they give us a call, we try and do our best to head out. Because if we go right when they call, then they'll be willing to call us again. And as you guys know, we use a lot of bedding with our cows. And the sawdust works really good at wicking up moisture. So we wanna try and keep as much sawdust as possible back at the farm. One of the other really nice things about the sawdust we get here is that they dry it all with a kiln. So there's no moisture in the sawdust, it's really dry. And so when we put it down for bedding, it really uh, soaks up a lot of moisture for the cows. It's neat, they have underneath the floor in here a giant vacuum and they just sweep all the sawdust into that giant vacuum and it sucks it up these tubes into these hoppers and then we just open up the hopper. Now what's nice about the spot where I'm standing and operating the machinery, um, there's a nice gust of wind that comes through here that really pushes the dust. So none of the dust gets to me and Matt was in the truck so he didn't have to worry about the dust. Um, all we're gonna do is let it settle a little bit more and then we're gonna be able to head home. Now we've turned this truck into somewhat of a sawdust camel um, but this will settle as we drive. So this is what we want. We're gonna pull the tarp up over the back and then we'll be able to head home. Now that is a good looking truck there. Nice and loaded with some bedding for the cows. I just hit, I just hit my shin off the step. 
Now, some of you may be curious if we pay anything for this sawdust, we do. We do pay a flat rate for each truckload that we take out, and we've done a cost analysis of what it costs us with all of this sawdust compared to what we used to use before, which was straw. And the price of straw continues to go up because one, not too many people raise straw and sell them in square bales, which is something we do, and we make quite a bit of profit at it. And two, the sawdust will last so much longer in the pens. It's better at wicking up the moisture, and when it comes to pull all of the manure out of the pen, the sawdust is a lot easier for us to scoop out. So we found that one, it's cheaper for us, two, it actually works better for us in the long run. And three, when it comes to manure time, it's a no-brainer for us. It just goes so much smoother. We just got home. Now, we don't need to unload the truck right now, so we're just going to leave it sit there for now. Now, I believe right now Dad, Daniel, and uh, Ralph, they're out in the woods, and Matthew's going to head out now too. So, guys, I got something new that I want to try. Uh, I want to talk about some of the varieties that we raise. Now, when it comes to varieties that we raise, we buy from three different companies. Uh, we buy from Seedway, we buy from Stokes, and we also buy from a company called Outstanding Seeds. Now, when it comes to vegetables, you guys have seen us throughout the years. Uh, we pick many different kinds of vegetables, but one of the things we always try and talk about is the varieties that we raise. Now, when it comes to varieties on different types of vegetables like broccoli, cabbage, cauliflower, it can be a little bit confusing. Uh, when you decide which variety you want to go with. But today I'm gonna share with you guys the reasons for planting certain varieties of broccoli. So today we're gonna be talking about our broccoli varieties. Now when it comes to a seed catalog, for example, I'll turn this one around to you. There is many different varieties of broccoli listed here. And if I turn the page, we also have a bunch of varieties that are listed on this side of the page. Now when I look at all of these different types of varieties, how do I choose which three varieties will work best for us? The first thing we need to start thinking about is our growing conditions, basically our weather. Does our weather allow us to raise mid-season cabbage, early season cabbage, or long season cabbage? When it comes to the long season cabbage, do we have enough time in our year to be able to finish out an entire crop of that broccoli? Now this past year we raised three varieties of broccoli. We raised an early season, a mid season, and a late season broccoli. And it took some trial and error for us to find those exact varieties. Something that I will always share with you, never be afraid to try something new. Because that may be your new favorite variety that you put into your garden the next season. Now what's interesting about all these varieties is that you can find them in so many different seed catalogs and many different companies find them. And the best way to find these varieties that I mentioned is to go online. Uh, this is Seedway, so you can go online to seedway.com and check there. Uh, and that's where I'll be getting this information out of. So as I mentioned before, today we are going to be talking about our broccoli varieties. And to start off, we're going to be going with our early broccoli variety. And that is called Emerald Crown. The early variety that we raise is Emerald Crown. It is 61 days to maturity. That is when the seed germinates and pops out of the soil. It is 61 days to a head. It has a high smooth dome with medium small beads. It has a bluish green color to it and the market season is widely adapted. You can use it basically anywhere and you can plant it at any time of the year. This early broccoli produces a uniform, solid and heavy head for crown cut. The heads resist purpling in cooler weather an emerald crown handles warmer weather very well. This emerald crown allows for late spring harvest and summer seeding for late summer harvest. This is one of the most widely adapted varieties for climates with weather extremes. So that was our early season broccoli, emerald crown. Now we're going to be moving on to our mid-season broccoli, which is called imperial. Imperial broccoli is a 71 day variety. It has a medium dome with small beads. The color is a dark green, and its market season is spring, summer, and fall. Imperial broccoli produces fancy quality in warm weather and is good for spring, summer, and early fall crops. And in the south, you can even plant this broccoli in winter. If you think your conditions are too warm to grow broccoli, give Imperial a try. Best for crown cut, and imperial maturity may be affected by heat and length of day. The day variety is 71. 
but that can be even shorter when you have it in a warm, long heat day environment. So far we've gone through our early variety of broccoli and our mid-season broccoli. There have been a few changes. For example, the mid-season broccoli, because of the longer day with the mid-season variety, it does get a larger head on it. However, the early season is better in colder climates and it does well in hot climates as well. Now the medium day variety, as was brought out, works really good in warmer weather. And if you have hot conditions where you live, maybe you'd wanna give that medium variety, that imperial, a try. Our last variety of broccoli that we plant is our latest season. The variety name is Avenger. It is an 80 day broccoli that has a smooth dome with fine beads. A little side note, this broccoli produces some of the largest heads I have ever seen and that we have ever harvested. The color of the broccoli is a bluish green color and its market season is fall or late fall. Avenger is for mid to late fall harvest in cool to cold weather. Heads are large with a dense, smooth dome. Avenger matures mid season in early fall plantings and very late in mid to late fall plantings. As I brought out, Avenger is not a cabbage you would want to use in the extreme heat, as it is something that will bolt relatively quickly. By using it in early spring plantings and later plantings, it allows you to have a nice dense broccoli harvest at two different times in the year. And there you have it. Those are the three varieties of broccoli that we planted this year. And we were very happy with the broccoli that we did harvest. Now I'm not going to go over any uh, pest management tools when it comes to these types of vegetables. Uh, everybody has different preferences on what they like to use. I was just talking about the varieties that we enjoy planting. Now when it comes to broccoli, the seeds are very tiny, easy to plant, and they're also easy to transplant when you have the starts. Now when it comes to the broccoli, you want your broccoli to be 15 to 18 inches apart. And that may sound like a lot of room, but by allowing enough oxygen to get around your broccoli, it's gonna prevent you from having diseases that would be there if your broccoli was too close together. That's something I would suggest to you if you're just starting planting at home. Now, I'm just gonna reiterate one more time. If you have a certain type of broccoli that you plant and it does well for you, keep planting it. Um, if you are new to gardening and you're looking for something to plant, those varieties that I mentioned, they will work for you. My suggestion, if you're looking for something new, be willing to try something new because you might find the next best variety for you and your family. If the broccoli did not grow well, it wouldn't be in this catalog. That's something I would remind you. If you guys are interested in segments like this where I go in and pick a vegetable and talk about the varieties we raise it and why we raise it, please let me know down in the comments. And if there's a variety that you found, for example, a broccoli variety that you really like, let me know because I might have to try it out one day. How does everybody look in here tonight? Half of them are missing. What do you mean half of them are missing? I see all the calves right here. Where's all them big ones? Oh yeah, dad was moving calves earlier. He moved some of the calves from in here out into the big pasture. So now they're now they're on the pastured grass. I'm the star. This leech over here is drinking milk off his mom and she can't eat dinner. And he's half the size that she is. He should be eating grain and she should be allowed to come up and eat. But she hey, this guy is one of my favorites right here. How you doing, buddy? A scratch? You want scratches? This guy, he's gonna dye his chin green from all the hay he's eating right here. Oh, you want your chin scratched? Oh. Oh, traffic jam, traffic jam. Beep, beep. We just got the farm market closed up and normally we all head up to the house together, but Lauren called me and asked me to take dinner out of the oven. So I better run up and do that or we'll have no dinner. My daughter is starting to teethe and she's been having a rough past couple nights. And since she's been having a couple rough nights, my wife and I have been having rough nights. So. She's in there taking care of the baby, feeding her, might be putting her down for a nap. I don't mind coming up and taking out the dinner for her. The veggie boy needs to pull dinner out of the oven. Hold on here. Let's get my hands. Careful, careful. Woohoo! Little did you know the veggie boy could also, oh, veggie boy could also take dinner out of the oven. Did you see me take dinner out of the oven? Man, you did a good job. Thank you. You know what I did? What? I brought up iced tea. Yo! <laughs> Hi to everyone. Whoa! Oh. 
No camera time for Callie. Are you really camera shy? Are you really camera shy? I just realized I'm in a lot of trouble. I didn't even film. Like we sat down, we ate dinner already. Callie cried and then laughed, cried and then laughed again. And now it's, everything's gone. So I guess that means this is where we're gonna end the video. I'd like to thank everyone for watching and I hope to see you next time. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye.